In this video, I'll show you how to arrange raw data into a frequency distribution table. The question reads, the grades of 30 students are as follows, where we have 30 observations here. We're asked to group this raw data into convenient classes. We need to choose the class width, class midpoints, and class limits. In addition, we need to find the absolute frequency and the relative frequency of each class. The steps to doing this are outlined to the right. And the first step is to find the range. And we do that by finding the greatest observation and subtracting it from the lowest. Let's go ahead and do that. We have step one. And the greatest observation in these 30 is 97.2. And that's located right here. The lowest observation is 58.4. 58.4 is right here. Therefore, the range will be 97 decimal 2 subtracted from 58.4. Using your calculator, you'll find out that the answer is 38 decimal 8. That covers step 1. In step 2, we need to find the class width. And we find the class width by taking this number and dividing it first by 5 and then by 20. This will give us a good idea on how big our classes should be. As stated here, to find the class intervals, we usually start between 5 and 20. So let's go ahead and divide this by 5 and this by 20. Dividing 38 decimal 8 by 5 should give you 7.7. .7. And using our calculator for the next, 38 decimal 8 divided by 20 gives us 1 decimal 94. We need to pick a convenient width between these two values. And because of that, I'll choose 6. So our class width is equal to 6. Now that we've chosen 6, let's take a look at our highest and lowest observation. We know our highest observation goes to 97.2 and our lowest observation is 58.4. So we need to pick an n value that is greater than 97.2 but also close to it, which will serve as our upper bound in our frequency table. In other words, instead of using 97.2, I'll use 98. 6 less than that is 92. Subtract by 6, we get 86, 80, 74, 68, 62, and 56. These will serve as my class limits. With these class limits, we can find the midpoint of each. For example, to find the midpoint between this number and this number, we add them up and divide by 2. And the same goes for all of these other class limits. The next step, which is outlined over here, is to get the class frequencies by tallying the number of observations that fall within each class. So I'm going to go ahead and create a table from these class limits and then tally up where each of these 30 observations fall within the limits defined below. I've gone ahead and created a table. And you'll notice that instead of using 56 to 62, which I had originally, I'm using 56 to 61.9. And the reason for that is because I have an observation that falls directly at the limit of one of my classes. For example, this number 62 would be ambiguous because we don't know whether it falls within this class or the next. So it's always nice to write it out like this, where you have the lower limit to the upper limit, but not including the end point. So if we were to write this in interval notation, it would be 56 with a square bracket to 62 with a round bracket, which means anything less than 62 belongs here. And similarly, from here to here, we would write down 62 to 68 with the round bracket. That being said, let's go ahead and find the class midpoints. For the first class, the midpoint would be 59. The next class will be 65. The next class will be 71, 77, 83, 89, and finally 95. Now we have to tally up the results. I'll show you the first three and then I'll fill in the rest automatically. So between 56 and 61 decimal 9, let's find out how many observations there are. There's one. This one doesn't count because it's at 62. And we have this one. So that makes two. Let's try between 62 and 67 decimal nine. Well, we know this one 
That's one, and there's the other. And let's do one more for good measure. Between 68 and 73 decimal nine. Between 68, there's one, there's another, there's another, and there's the last one, that's four. If we had five that fit in one class, the fifth one would be a line passing through the four. If you do the rest correctly, you should end up with the following. Now that I've filled it in, I can also fill in the absolute frequency. So this represents two, two, four, and the rest look like this. The relative frequency is how much this is compared to all of the observations. And this will be a percentage, so we take two divided by 30, and so on. If you do this correctly, you should end up with the following percentages. And adding all of these up should end up giving you 100%. And so there you have it. That is how to arrange raw data into a frequency distribution table.